Oh, hi there. So I'm gonna make some guacamole just to kind of test out my GoPro. I thought I lost my GoPro. Do you know how small GoPros are? They're tiny, tiny, tiny little cameras. And I moved houses. And in the process, the teeny tiny GoPro got put in a big giant box, which I didn't find until yesterday. So here we are today, getting to use the GoPro and make guacamole. Why am I making guacamole? I like guacamole. It's green, it's good, there's no cooking. I know how to do it, even though I do have a recipe. Oh, this is my base recipe. The California Avocado Association best guacamole ever. And it's pretty simple. You got your, uh, you got your avocados. They recommend three lines, which I learned early on is too many lines. So we're gonna dial that back. Two medium tomatoes chopped. I like tomatoes, so I'm doubling up on the tomatoes or tomatoes. One medium onion chopped fine. Ground black pepper, salt, garlic. Here, cumin. Cumin, have you ever tried cumin? It's good, it's like taco seasoning, I like. Uh, they also recommend cayenne pepper. I'm not a spicy fan, so I don't use it. I just don't put it in there. They also have a pinch of sugar. I don't think it needs it, so I don't put the pinch of sugar in. Um, they also have a serrano chili. No, no, no. If there's not gonna be any cayenne pepper, there's not gonna be any serrano chili. And then they have the cilantro. Now, for those of you who like cilantro, you understand this. For those of you who hate cilantro, it tastes soapy. I'm, don't eat my guacamole. I'm sorry. If, if you don't like cilantro, you can also use basil, I've heard. And maybe I'll try that in a future video where we use basil instead of cilantro. But today, uh, we're using cilantro. And I'm going to make some guacamole, right? What the heck? Do you guys like avocados? I really like them. You know what? They're green. They're a plant. They're healthy and delicious. This is only good fat. So I say eat your guacamole. Eat your avocados. I'm sure they've got vitamins in them, and I'm sure somebody out there can tell me what those vitamins are. I don't know. They come off a tree though, right? I mean, how bad for you could they be? Anything that comes off a tree is not going to be horrible for you. Are they a fruit? They have the stone in the middle. Which, by the way, my favorite part of getting an avocado done is the choppy chop twist. Oh, look at that. The other thing about my guacamole is I don't like it pasty. I don't like to do the whole mortar and pestle thing. When you mash it all down and it turns into kind of a... Have you ever been to Hawaii and had poi? Me either. But uh, I've heard about poi. <laughs> and I know it's kind of a like a pasty, like... There's one finger poi and two finger poi. One finger poi is poi that's so thick, you can scoop out a dollop of it, I don't know, eat your poi that way. Two finger poi is when the poi is a little bit runnier and you have to use two fingers, otherwise it'll just kind of fall off your one finger, so you use two fingers to scoop it up. But I don't like that consistency. I like a more, almost like a salsa. A salsa guac where it's a little bit chunky you can see all what's in it it's not like a um, it's not like a paste it's not mush it's pieces of stuff that you eat so in order to achieve my pieces of stuff then I like to just kind of cut them into cubes so you go one two and they don't have to be great because they're going to get a little mushed up, right? I mean, it is guacamole after all. I really like guacamole. Uh, my husband does not like guacamole. He does not like avocado, which is unfathomable to me. How can you not like avocado? It's so fresh and creamy and sweet and good. It's so good. He says it's a consistency thing, which I kind of get, but I don't know. This is the same guy who his family introduced me to this uh, Southern delicacy, I guess it is. I don't know. Tell, you guys tell me if you've heard of this. It is a canned pear, and then in the little kind of divot 
of the pair. So, you know, imagine a, a pear, kind of pear-shaped, right? Mm -hmm. And then this little part in the middle where it gets fat at the bottom and inside that divot. Wait for it. It's a dollop of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. So it's a canned pear. Dollop of mayonnaise. Sprinkle of shredded cheddar on top of it. And served as a side. Okay. So the guy who will eat that happily will not eat my guacamole. All right, now this is a little bit out of order. I put the lime in now because if you don't, this avocado can start to brown and the lime juice helps it kind of stop browning. Do you guys know this trick? If you put, maybe I can do it after I cut it. You put some citrus in the microwave for just a couple seconds and by doing that, you will get more juice out of it when you squeeze it over stuff. I love that. Ooh, on the kitchen. All right, so this might be all the lime I put in this. Half a lime. Remember, the recipe called for three limes. The first time I made this recipe, I put three limes in. It was almost inedible. I still ate it, but three limes was too much. All right, so now we're just gonna kind of tumble that around, get that lime juice all good and distributed, and keep it from letting the meat of the avocado oxidize. And you can see it's it's really pretty chunky. It's not paste. There's no me gusta paste. Let's do the tomatoes now. The tomatoes are also do kind of weird, and I hope you'll bear with me on this. So normally I like tomatoes. I'll just eat a tomato like it's an apple. But for guacamole, because I like it kind of saucy and I like it a little bit chunky, I want to get rid of some of the liquid that's inside these tomatoes. So what I like to do is go in after I've had the tomato and just scoop out all the seeds and the kind of liquidy stuff. But I do love tomato and I do put way too much of it in this recipe. That's the nice thing about guacamole though, is you can really put whatever you want into it, right? I know there are probably some guacamole purists like, no, no onion, no cilantro, no sugar, no salt, no 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 no. At some point, I would like to make a really, 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 or learn how to make a really, really, really traditional guacamole. You know, like if you were in Mexico City and you ordered guacamole, what would come? I'm curious. Let me know if you know. All right. So again, these are going to be kind of chunky, and I could, if I wanted to, look at my chopper thing, and I might do that because that was fast. Hold on. It's just right over here. Ah. And we're back. All right, so instead of chopping up all these tomatoes and these things, you need to the chopper thing. If you don't have one of these things, you should get one. They're the best thing in the whole world. They make perfect little chopped up square pieces of whatever the heck you want to put into this little grate. Uh, and they're beautiful and they're perfect every time. Ah. It's probably the kitchen tool we use the most in this house. And it comes with different size. Oh, shit. I have cut my finger somehow. And all of this is probably contaminated. But since I'm the only one who's going to be eating it, it's only gross. It's not the grossest thing in the whole world. It really sucks, though. So let's put our tomatoes in. And then yum. Bloody finger, gross, gross, gross. Again, no one's eating this but me, I promise. Okay, then the onion. Ooh, so gross. My knife skills are a uh, truffles. I am not good at chopping things, which is why I have the little chopping thing. Do you know the trick about if onions make you cry when you cut them, what to do? You're supposed to light a candle near where you're cutting the onions. Doing that will prevent you from crying when you cut onions. Allegedly. I have tried it unsuccessfully. Maybe you'll have better luck. Uh, but you can see now things are kind of coming together and again, this is going to be a very chunkly, clunkily walk. It's not going to be a paste. Garlic as well. 
The recipe says two cloves of garlic minced. I say, let's do one and see how we're feeling about it. This video is going to suck. And the reason it's not going to be good is I have a bloody finger, 40 pounds overweight. My kitchen is a mess. And my knife still stuck. So I don't know what you're learning from watching this. Nothing really. More. Who's going to eat all this guacamole, you ask? Because I can't serve it to anyone. Not with the bloody finger. I am going to eat all of it. Here's our cilantro. It tastes so sappy. All right, well, then don't put it in. I don't know what else to tell you. But I just think it tastes clean and fresh and bright. Here's our cilantro. All right, that's probably enough of that. A little shake of cumin. A little shake, not very much. We're eyeballing it today. Ground pepper, not very much. Salt, again, barely any. I just don't think it eats. I don't want to adulterate our flavors. And it's contaminated with my finger blood. The sad part is, I'm not even going to take a bite of this on camera because you guys will be like, you weird self vampire. That's disgusting. What I'm going to do is throw all this out. Because it's contaminated and it's gross. So we'll just chuck it in the bin. Okay, now here's the part where, remember I told you I don't like it mushy. I like it very uh, kind of chunky. It's at this stage where I do allow some mushing to occur. I'll allow it. Now I just get in here with a fork and I just mash, mash, mash. Yeah, look how pretty that is. Come on. Come on! Alright, you guys, that is basically my guacamole. Just for presentation. Yeah. That's the stuff. Ooh. That is bloody good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Alright y'all, guacamole, oh, and my other little secret, I like a blue corn chip, look how nicely it's taken off the green, red, and see how it's kind of chunky, and a little bit dry, it's not pasty, mm-hmm, oh, Okay, y'all. That's my guacamole story. But uh, maybe come back another time and we'll we'll twist it up. We'll do something different. Okay. Thanks.